Welcome, Welcome to Tech Area in Focus. The mini series of sort of. Uh, I've not even decided what this, yeah. this really is, but yeah. It's... Focus on fly tying. I think so that so works. We're looking at fly tying skills and, you know, fly tying in general with sort of Tenkara as an influence, if you like. Yeah, so, perfect. Yeah, if I'll you stuck with that. us this far, then <laughs> we will continue. Uh, quick recap on the last episode. If you didn't see yes. it, it'll be probably on our blog. That's one place. Or if you go to the discovertenkara.com, Tenkara in focus somewhere on the navigation, there'll be... There's that, but also, yeah. I mean, if you're on Facebook, um, search for our Tinker in, Focus, yeah. <laughs> Tinker in Focus Facebook page. Try saying that after a pint. Um, or the Facebook group itself as well. Yeah. So um, There's a chance if you've got this on our page or on YouTube or wherever, there'll be a link somewhere in the descriptions as well. So you can check out episode one there. It's but, worth it because, I mean, that was, it was quite a sort of a bit of a personal history from my point of view, particularly yeah. that idea of getting into fly tying and getting just, well, fly fishing yeah. um, and getting over the psychological hump of using artificial official flies instead of baits um being able to produce a fly that you then had confidence yeah. in and how, how massive that is let's not forget you did demonstrate the one finger whip finish as well i did and it's worth a quick look <laughs> just for that and the nose picking technique now, yes. now you must check it out <laughs> definitely it's worth it though yeah 100 mm -hmm. percent so where you were, where do you want to go with this one? Well, well, because I mean you're very kindly saying about the uh, the, sort of the ninja trick with the mm. one finger uh, whip finish. Um, you are in a short while in this lesson going to demonstrate something which is I was pretty impressed with, and I think it's it's one of those things that's easily overlooked, and it might be something that experienced tires do but don't realise that they're doing it. So that can be very important when you're actually trying to pass things on to other people. When you're teaching, you don't realise the things that you're unconsciously competent at. So breaking it down in that way, mm. uh, it's a fantastic way of producing perfectly even underbodies. And believe you me, anything that happens on the underbody of a flyer will show through on the final finished product. It's your base coat or your foundation. Isn't yeah. it? If, if that's solid, then you've got something solid to build on. But the clever thing is that John combines it with the way that you catch on the thread, which is something that you cannot escape if you're going to tie any fly. You're going to have to start the thread on the hook somehow. So we kill sort of two birds with one stone with that. So that's coming up a little bit later on. Um, but first of all, why? I mean, we're, we're known as Tenkara Focus in Japanese fly fishing method. Why on earth would you shift from tying the kinds of flies we were talking about in the first episode to trying to understand what Kibari about and that yeah, kind of thing? Yeah. I mean, we started, didn't we? We tried Kibari because it was a novelty to us. Yeah. Because we discovered Tenkara and we're really enjoying it. Been fish initially. I think most people who pick up a Tenkara rod, for you know, who are fishermen already, they'll tie on the familiar flies and catch fish. Mm. But then you see all these pictures and you read these things and you think, I oh, fancy giving that a try. And sometimes it works straight away. Sometimes it doesn't. I talk to a lot of people where they have a mental block. In the same way we talked in the last episode mm. about having a mental block on either flies because you've come from bait or tying your own flies because you've bought shop bought flies i think moving to kibari is a similar transition if you don't get that instant yeah. success it's like oh they're no good for they me, don't work for me the first time i tried it if i'm honest it was like well can i at least catch half as many fish as i would mm. have done on my my go-to confidence yeah. western patterns and that was you know that i was not even expecting not not expecting much of them mm. so when we actually found out that you know through the experiences that we've had that they've been absolutely just devastatingly effective on on any of the trout streams that we've fished in. And, we, you know, we get about a little bit, and we certainly fish quite a lot in our own country yeah. as well. The fact that these things are just like, you know, like, almost like trout magnets, you know, they're, they're sort of ridiculously good. Well, it got to a point <laughs> where I had a competition angler who I shall not name, uh, because I think he'd like to keep it a secret about these patterns. <laughs> he'd, have, he'd have me keep my fly box shut. Yeah. Um, but he actually had me tie him a few examples mm -hmm. and he used them in an eliminator mm. to, to great effect. So, you know, using a Japanese derived kibari pattern in a Western fly fishing competition, which and is well completely outside illegal. Of, yeah. yeah, it's completely legal to use that style of tying. It's, but it's not just Japanese trout, it's, this is in, you know, well yeah. outside of Japan. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, on, on its day for a comp angler, you know, for that fly to be the choice, it's, you know, it shows that it's not just a novelty. It's not just playing at sort of, you know, the Japanese style. They have a very, very sort of powerful function. Mm. And if used in the right way, it can take your fishing to another dimension. Absolutely. Without getting too deep into it as well, there's one or two applications of Kibari that Kibari are perfectly suited to 
that a lot of very, very good um, anglers outside of Japan and outside of Tenkara, I think, are sort of sleeping on a little bit at the yeah, moment. Yeah, Because um, you don't see people doing these techniques out there. You know. Yeah, yeah. You can get some absolutely phenomenal fish captures. Mm. You know, we've caught some lovely wild fish, both small, beautiful fish and, and big sort of hard-fighting, lovely yeah, fish yeah, yeah, yeah. on these patterns. So that, I mean, yeah, I totally agree. It, it's the, you know, the whole range of fantastic experiences of fish captures that we've experienced mm. through these. But I want to get away from the idea that learning to tie these sort of kibari patterns actually takes away anything from your Western fly tying. Because mm. all of these simple patterns, they kind of embody the manoeuvres and all the th material management that you'd need for any kind of fly tying. Yeah, yeah. So they're very simple, but very good models for doing that sort of side of things as well. Yeah. Um, and as I said, it leads to some of those experiences that you've seen on, on screen that we've enjoyed and you know, we'd like to share with other people if we can. I'd even argue that the, it could actually improve your fly tying because you get that simplicity where mm -hmm. you only get so many materials to produce Yeah. Um, that it really can refine the way you tie flies and maybe even make you revisit some of your Western patterns. Mm. Maybe you could simplify make the process well i think i think it does give you that ability and it gives you what it, it what it focuses your mind on is tying flies for fish and what fish mm. respond to yeah not just what the latest magazine article says or what's in vogue yeah. in the shops or what the hot fly is because somebody says so or yeah. the magic material or whatever yeah. it is yeah. by get generating that sort of understanding of, of you know what you need to put in front of the fish and how you produce that on the hook that's yeah. very powerful in any kind of you know yeah fly tying endeavour that you'll undertake. Segues nicely into the fact that we've got a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you know, knowing what fish want and then giving it to them, actually mm. marrying that, the functional, the way that a fly actually works and the materials of each fly yeah. works in the water yeah. versus how to actually put that in front of a yeah. fish in a way that you're going to entice them. Yeah. yeah, and it took 192 pages to kind of explain that. It yeah. was explained as simply as possible but honestly, that is a great secret weapon in, in that sort of uh, being able to just have that ability and that mm. competence. I'm sure we could put a link on screen to, uh, you know, if you want to check that out. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. Thing. But on, on this, we wanted to just take a slightly different tack. That shows you the patterns. It shows you why they work. It shows you how you interact with fish with your kibari. But we wanted to sort of work a bit more towards the actual tying of some kibari. Yeah. So shall we look at what the sort of, points are we want to get across in this where you sure, sort of ought to list them across maybe put some uh, things on screen as we yeah, do it let's do that so here's the thing at least for me um, and feel free to stop me if, if you disagree but when you really learn to tie these um, patterns from scratch you get a really intimate understanding of how those materials work mm. on the hook and in the water um, and then because you've had that higher level of sort of involvement with that process and higher level of understanding, when that fish actually accepts your offering and takes it, that it's a really, really sort of special kind of feeling. And that, that is a big, big part of the magic of all fly fishing for me. And, it, and it, it, you get that in spades in Tenkara because everything is trimmed down to the, that sort of, um, you know, nothing, nothing extraneous is, yeah. is needed. So you, you feel like you've really understood the whole process, and that's very satisfying. Yeah, understanding the the sort of the makeup of the flies you tie, the DNA, it's, there are two ways to go about it. You can follow a, a sort of recipe, like you'd follow a recipe for a, a meal, where you follow every single step in the recipe, and that will get you that meal. But if you want to do a variation, then you're starting to move outside a recipe, and if you don't understand the ingredients, then it's very easy to cook a pretty nasty meal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some things don't do well being tampered with if you don't understand the way that they interact together. Mm. Thinking like baking cakes and things, the wrong amount of flour to water and, and or liquid or, or eggs or fat. Yeah. Get it get the balance wrong and it goes hideously wrong and you get this thing that doesn't rise. And in the same way with materials, you can be switching off triggers in the fish's feeding behavior just as easily as you can be switching them on. Mm. Now, if you understand the way the materials work and the way they interact with the trigger systems, mm. then you're free to prepare meals where you know that the, your choice of ingredients and your use of ingredients are producing 
good quality food because that's essentially what this fly is. It's yeah, food yeah, yeah, yeah. For it's a an fish. Yeah, yeah. So if you understand the ingredients, like an Italian chef understands the simplicity of ingredients to make wonderful, simple meals, mm. you can do the same in your fly time. That's it. I mean, if you understand the process, you can reverse engineer from the result that you want to get. Mm. And that's, you know, and for me, that one of the real hidden benefits to that understanding is, okay, we kind of came about that understanding through fairly selfish pursuits. You know, we wanted to have that ability for ourselves. But I've been really surprised by how satisfying it is to actually pass that on to other people and yeah. see them, you know, the, the look on their faces when it kind of, it comes together for them as well. Yeah, yeah. I think that teaching element is something that's, often missing uh, you know when people interact online and things mm. you know being able to clearly get across it, it's there's a culture of almost copying things exactly mm. and if you're doing well on a fishery and there are other fishermen see you they, what fly are you using mm. and they can it's a very western thing to want the name of the fly and we've yeah. seen a complete different attitude in japan where they want the sort of ingredients of the fly yeah 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 um Another great sort of thing about this approach, as we talked about the food before, once you understand the ingredients, I like, I like the sort of way the Italians mm -hmm. really care about the quality of ingredients. Once you understand the way ingredients interact with one another, it frees you up to get a recipe, mm. but then deconstruct and reconstruct and improvise. Yeah. And when, when I'm tying and when I'm demonstrating kibari, I always like to say where you can vary mm. the tying. You know, you can substitute this for this or this for that, and it'll change the way it does, whether it's a coloured trigger point or yeah. whether it's a bigger, more mobile hackle. Making one change to an already established pattern can have a, 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 an effect that you want to create. Absolutely. And the flip side of that is is that, you know, giving that free, freeing people up from the feeling that they need that one magic material. Mm. That if I've not got that magic material, then I'm, yeah. I'm screwed. Yeah. But then Chad, when you actually, Chadwick's four seven seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, yeah, you know. Yeah. But yeah, once you understand that on a on a, a process level, mm. you can give that ability and actually free people up so much yeah. to develop what they do. So yeah. it's not a constraining and a dogmatic thing yeah. at all. And that understanding, it's a very, very different thing to improvise from a, a point of understanding the ingredients mm. than to just blindly improvise. I used to have a saying in my sort of Western fly fishing career about flies that are born in the vice. Yeah. And it's just flights of fancy for no reason other than people fancy using a different colour or a different mm -hmm. hackle. But there's no sort of thought. And it's almost like throwing things into a mosh pot and boiling it up and calling it a meal. <laughs> you get some successes, you get some disasters, but there, there's a more probability of disasters yeah. or the mediocrity than there is a huge successes. Yeah. So understanding your ingredients can lead you to improvise to levels, productively yeah to levels of what feels like genius and and you, <laughs> you will do things when you when you understand them, like yeah i actually chose to do that and it's just taking a load of fish today <laughs> yeah. so it's a beautiful feeling I, I tied it but not only that i made a choice and i know when i get people who, who i've talked to tie and talked to fish who come back saying oh i, I moved this and i tried mm -hmm. this and it, looked, it feels like all their own work so what it's I mean, wonderful. I'd almost boil it down to a phrase like the gift of competence. You know, you're yeah. giving the gift of competence yeah. to other people yeah. as well. And yeah. so, yeah, it's amazing from your old selfish point of mm. view when it works mm. for you. But actually that, that gift yeah. of other people being able to do that and, and, and being empowered to, to, you know, to choose their own sort of way of doing things. There's almost an irony to the whole experience we're talking about here. You know, what, what we're sort of, you know, the snake oil we're selling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> of, of these wonderful flights of, improvisation and achievement is the best way to learn is to follow a recipe mm. and actually understand the materials and, and sort of follow the recipe, see how the materials interact, then go and follow the sort of process of catching a fish with it. And when you understand that, then you've got that very solid foundation from which yeah. to improvise. There's a fantastic book. I'm going to segue slightly. There's a fantastic book um, called Practice Perfect, um, which I highly recommend, but they talk about the importance of um, drilling and doing the basics and understand mm. learning the basics by rote fundamentally and then over time when that becomes automatic that frees you up to be creative and to improvise yeah. if you if all of your focus is involved with doing the basics in any activity you've no space to be to, to improvise and be creative yeah. you know that practice doesn't end when you stop being a beginner it continues and so it is important to have these solid foundations and yeah. ground yeah. which hopefully swings us fairly neatly around to 
a wonderful demonstration of again it's a fundamental um, but don't make the mistake of feeling that it's you know even if you're a very experienced tire don't overlook it because it's it's mastering these fundamentals that not only give you great results for yourself but it's the understanding those processes at that building block level that lets you teach other people as well and give other people that that gift of competence that we talked about so let's check out john now it's a wonderful little tweak and a hack and it also is you know you can't escape from doing this step you have to start a fly somewhere so john's going to nail it for you now and just demonstrate the perfect way to do it so straight in with it i'm going to use this orange thread just so you get a bit better visibility about what exactly is going on and I find the best way to start your thread is to kind of put a diagonal around the hook like this. And then we're going to make one complete turn going forward. Then you turn your thread back and you start to make turns going backwards. And you'll see each turn is pushing this thread along. And you can actually use this thread, this angle on the thread, to force each turn to touch the next because if you try and make a wider turn the thread slips down and you get this very nice effect where you can run right down the hook quite quickly in virtually touching turns so while ever you want to put a flat sort of body of almost touching turns just keep that angled like that and it'll keep dropping each turn next to the next to the last turn if you like um, once you've got enough on just trim off and then you can go wherever you want to on the hook in open turns or touching turns to actually begin tying your fly. So I'm right back to the top there and we've got what we call a bed of thread for you to begin the actual tying of the fly. It's a great demo. That's uh, just, like I said, absolutely nailed it. So, uh, yeah. um, a, a thing I'd like to add there, um, if you use that method uh, for tying North Country flies, the, the kind of flies that want silk bodies, just one pass down and one pass up, mm. very neat touching turns, unlike the sort of Tenkara patterns that get a bit haphazard mm. as, they, uh, as they sort of form a thread body. It's a great way to get that single pass, real nice touching turns. It lays a solid foundation. And the other thing, if you've ever tied fly patterns, like, like these big sort of lure patterns, and as you're getting near the end and you tie your wing in and you pull it tight and everything on the yeah. whole body rotates. <laughs> getting that solid foundation nice yeah. and tight with touching turns is a great way to really sort of lock things in from mm. the start. So if you've ever had problems with rotating bodies, mm. getting that solid foundation is a good way to not necessarily completely stop it, but it certainly helps to mitigate things. You can have that on for free, an extra yeah. tip. <laughs> But nothing. Listen, that about wraps this uh, tutorial up, this lesson. And what have we got coming next? We've got one more of these coming. We have. Um, and I think, yeah, there's, it steps up a little bit in terms of the um, technical level. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's one of those that is, if you can do the manoeuvres that we've covered, we will cover in these three um, episodes, you'll be able to tie a very effective fly from start to finish without any other thing needed. So in one way, it's a great sort of introduction to, to people that have never tied a fly before. Mm. On the other hand, the hack, again, that uh, John comes up with that, to show you, with uh, it's actually to do with dubbing, um, which can be uh, not a black art, but it's, it's, it's one where people can sort of get frustrated with it if they don't know mm. the tricks and the manoeuvres. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a great one for making sure that you can perfectly and instantly start forming a very controlled dubbed body mm. and it's how the really good tyres uh, achieve that um, yeah. so we'll, yeah. we'll be covering that in the uh, the next lesson uh, in the meantime obviously uh, as I've said in previous episodes uh, if you're on the email list already you'll get a personal notification to say hey your next lesson's ready um, tune in and check it out so if you're not already on that list please find the link that you know you'll be able to come across it yeah, wherever yeah, this video is showing the link where this is showing if you can't find a link head over to discovertenkara.com there's a sign up button on the front page yep. you can also find an archive of our other video products that we've put out there lots mm -hmm. and lots of free videos on the site if you like the free videos and if you fancy supporting them you can head over to patreon.com forward slash tenkara and you'll find our patreon page and I think it'd be nice to finish on a massive thanks to all the people that are supporting us on that Patreon page. We couldn't be doing things like this. Huge thanks guys. because we're already doing stuff that we would be unable to do without that support. Even yeah. though that at the right as, at, as we record this, we're not at our first milestone yet, but the, the stuff that's coming in already yeah. 
we've used it already and we've done better yeah. stuff than we would have been yeah. able to do already. So, so thank you so yeah. much for that. Um, a big thanks from us and for anyone that's out there watching this for free, you know, you think should go to our Patreon support. Well, you want to be buying them a drink or something. Yeah, they, they are the people making this possible right now. So yeah. until the next episode, we will uh, see you there. Yeah.